and puppets can indeed be very scary, especially to those with a vivid imagination. Maybe because they resemble little people. And when they are invoked with a curse or a spirit, manipulated by means and given a voice, they become alive. There are many legends and stories that surround cultures and traditions, like here in Indonesia, about evil dolls and what they do when they come alive. Even in the West, there are movies that have brought alive such dolls. For example, Chucky and Annabelle. Here in this museum, there are puppets, there are dolls, and it is believed that they are channels for good and bad spirits. This is the historic Fatihila Square in Old Jakarta. On weekends, this square attracts quite a number of street performers and massive numbers of tourists. This square is also home to a few museums, one of which is indeed unique. That is the Wayang Museum or the Wayang Kulit Museum. This museum exhibits thousands of puppets from Indonesia and also from around the world. In Indonesia, the people have a strong fascination for dolls and puppets since time immemorial. It has become a part of their tradition and culture. To some of them, it has become an important part of their lives. And obviously, with that, the spiritual and paranormal aspects of dolls come into play. This is when I explore the games people engage in, involving dolls and puppets. One such popular game is called Jai Lang Kong. now at the National Museum in Jakarta. I believe that the more we learn about the purpose of dolls, statues, puppets or any other effigies, the more we will understand their significance with the local communities and the society in Indonesia at large. For example, at the back of me here is a statue called Hampatong. When placed at the entrance of a village, it protects the entire village from diseases and bad spirits. And when placed inside the home, it brings good fortune and health. There are numerous other statues, effigies, puppets and dolls which are used for many other purposes and rituals. As an example, in North Sumatra, there is Si Gale Gale, a puppet made into the size of a real human being. It is part of the Batak people's culture. It is constructed in a way that the player is able to move all its body parts, including facial expressions. This doll is performed in a ceremony called Papopo Sapata to appease the deceased who have passed on without leaving any descendants. There are also other statues and effigies that are placed at home to protect the entire family. But do they really repel spirits? There are many other rituals and one very popular one is called Jai Lang Kong. Wouldn't it be great to see how this ritual is done and how the puppet comes alive? I am here with Professor Nozenki, who has enlightened us on the paranormal culture in Indonesia. Today, we are meeting him again to gain more insights into the significance of boneka and puppets in the lives of the Indonesians for centuries, particularly about the famous doll play Jai Lang Kong. In Indonesia, dolls and puppets have a very strong significance. Can you please explain how did that significance come about? 
pernah ada di Once upon a time in Central Java, a guru was thinking about a method that would interest his students in learning mathematics. He had an idea. Why not use the Jailangkung game to do it? There's a gradient here is seen from the point of view using the Jailangkung. Secondly, health matters. How is it diagnosed? It was a time before doctors. So during a Jalangkung game, the doll would write what was wrong with the person with a chalk, or write on a piece of paper with a pencil. It is from this that there has always been a connection between the Jalangkung game with education and also medical matters. What do you mean by the Jalangkung will write? From what I see, it's a puppet. Does it get possessed by spirits in order to write? In the game, there are two players and a shaman. The shaman will call upon a spirit to enter the doll or puppet. It is this spirit that is responding to the shaman. He will say, "This is a sick man. Please tell us what is wrong or what is missing." Then the doll will write, "He is like this because he has not been drinking well." It is also interesting to note that in this diorama shows the diagnostic capability of Jai Langkung in Surabaya. This is because a minister was so taken aback by what the shamans could diagnose that he ordered the construction of a diorama as a historical tribute. Wouldn't it be great to see how this ritual is done and how the puppet comes alive? In the game, there are two players and a shaman. The shaman will call upon a spirit to enter the doll or puppet. It is this spirit that is responding to the shaman. How about the origins of Jai Lang Kong? I am told that even though it is a uh, part of the tradition and culture here in Indonesia, the origin is actually Chinese. Can you give me more depth on that? There has been evidence of Indonesian and Chinese contacts since 3000 BC. And this is the opinion of Muhammad Yamin, who has been called the father of Indonesian history. He said that the Chinese arrived in this region and inhabited Java, Sumatra. And the ritual had a name that was not Jai Langkung. When it arrived in Java, the locals called it Chai Langkung, referring it to the goddess of baskets. But at that time in Indonesia, baskets were hard to come by, so the locals replaced the basket head with that of a coconut shell. Nini Towok is the Javanese term for this game. Jai Langkung is the Chinese term. It is the same ritual or game. I am here at a cemetery in Pasakamis, together with Professor Nozinki, who has been studying the Jai Langkong game for a very long time. This evening, starting at 9 p.m., we are going to witness the game, and there is a group of players who will perform this game. They will conduct their prayers before the game. So, I am looking forward to witness this very popular game here in Jakarta. While we await for the Jalangkong players to prepare the game, I can explain more about this game. According to Professor Nozenki, in the olden days, the game actually functioned as a children's game to instill good values, like learning mathematics. However, 
As time goes by, the traditional games like Jalangkong are pushed aside as children become more tech-savvy and prefer playing with electronic gadgets. As a result, the game has evolved into a more sacred and mystical purpose and intention. Based on history, which you had explained to me before, the Jai Lang Kong was used for health and also education to make it entertaining for the children. Is it the same purpose today in, in 2016? In several places right now, people play this game for different reasons. For example, they play this game to entertain children. But back then, the use of Jai Lang Kung was for education and health purposes. We did not have modern medical diagnosis like we do now. So Jai Lang Kung was used to determine ailments. Given that today is mainly used as a game for entertainment, is it therefore nothing serious? The purpose of this game is now different. But there are some people who still use it for rather sacred purposes, as you can obviously see in the ritual. The ritual is used to invite the spirit to possess the doll. Now, we're actually talking about the mechanics of the gestures or movements in the doll. The puppeteer is the one who summons the spirit, and the spirit is the entity that moves the doll to answer the questions. I could not agree more that seeing is believing. So I'm now going to watch and observe Jai Lang Kong, the game. Jai Lang Kong, Jai Lang Se. Di sini ada pesta. Pestanya pesta kecil. In Indonesia, the people have a strong fascination for dolls and puppets since time immemorial. It has become a part of their tradition and culture. And obviously, with that, the spiritual and paranormal aspects of dolls come into play. This is when I explore the games people engage in, involving dolls and puppets. One such popular game is called Jai Lang Kong. that they will use? Yes. Jai Langkung, Jai Langse. Di sini ada pesta, pestanya pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datanglah. Jai langkung, jai langse. Di sini ada pesta, pestanya pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datang. Jai langkung, jai langse. Di sini ada pesta, pestanya pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datang. A few moments later, the player starts interacting with the doll, while the second player continues chanting. Siapa nama kamu coba Nama kami ada pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah. Tulis. Jalan kung, jalan berapa lama kamu? Di sini ada pesta. Pestana, pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datang. Melukis, melukis, nggak apa-apa. Jalan kung, jalan. Nama, nama. Di sini ada pesta. Pestanya, pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datang. Jalan kung, jalan. Di sini ada pesta. Pestanya, pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput, pulang tadi antar. 
Datanglah, datang. Tulis siapa nama kamu. Di sini Ayo, ada tulis. pesta. Pestanya pesta kecambik kelas. Datang tadi jemput. Pulang Nanti tadi. Ya. Tulis. Datanglah. Siapa nama kamu? The doll seems to react and move, which means that the unseen entity has entered it. Professor Nozenki is trying to decipher the message that is being written. He said that the sketching looks like a face and a year that seems to have detached itself from the face. It could be telling us that it is unable to hear us. Then, it reacted by drawing a straight line. Is it the person who holds the puppet, the facilitator? Must it be somebody who is trained or someone like me? Can I hold the puppet? Preferably a trained performer, so that there can be a contact, easier for it to enter. If it is not an ustas or holy person that talks to the host, we fear that the spirits will not appear. So if the person isn't trained, the ritual will not be complete. With permission from the players, I am allowed to join them in this game with their guidance on how to hold the doll and chant. Jalangkung, jalangse. Di sini ada pesta. Pestanya pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput. Pulang tadi antar. Datanglah, datanglah. Jalangkung, jalangse. Di sini ada pesta. Pestanya pesta kecil. Datang tadi jemput. Pulang tadi antar. I've just completed witnessing and experiencing for myself the popular and famous game called Jailangkong. Placing my hand at the base of the puppet allowed me to experience a change in weight. When the puppet started to move, there was a weight difference. And because my hand was together with the other two uh, players, I could sense that there was no manipulation of the puppet. Then a weight came and then a force went forward and then I could feel the pen mark on this piece of paper in a way that was strong and I could feel the vibration of the marker as it drew this line. Jalangkong in Indonesia currently is used as some form of entertainment but it is also strongly believed that a spirit or an entity does come and possess the puppet. Having experienced this myself, I can see why people still do it till today 
and they would choose a location like a cemetery to conduct this game. Like I always say, what we see may not be real, and what is real, we may not see.